Am I the only one that this stuff happens to all the time? When I watch YouTube channels, they never have this stuff happen. But everything I build, weird crap happens like this. Hey guys, welcome to Jasco Goods. Working in a small, cramped garage really sucks sometimes. Back in January, I made a promise that I was gonna fix up my garage this year and get it done. I, swear. I got pretty close. So far I got these cabinets built and I also built these drawers. I got my clamps a little bit more organized. In today's video, I'm gonna attempt to build a French cleat wall right here. And I'm gonna try to use this new tool to help me cut straight lines. Cross your fingers. Now I could rage quit and go watch cartoons. Autobots, roll out. Or I could end up turning this into the knitting channel I keep talking about. Let's get to building. I got some three quarter inch plywood that I'm gonna use for the French cleats. And the first thing I need to do is rip it down into five inch strips. I can't really do it on my table saw because I don't have the setup. My table saw is not wide enough. I don't have uh, a table that big. So I got this Craig rip cut jig to rip it down. I'm not sponsored by them. I bought it myself with my own money. Uh, if it works, I'll let you guys know. You guys get yourself one. If not, we'll know that too. Guys, here's the instructions that came with, or as we call these in the 90s, bathroom reading material. I think most people pretty much know how these things work. It's just a square that rides along the edge of the plywood. You set your saw at a certain distance and you can make repeatable cuts every time the same distance. Bora makes one that I've used in my other videos, but it's hard to set up and it's kind of jankety. So I'm hoping that this one works better. And my first impression just putting it together is that this Craig rip guide is much more high quality than the Bora version. One piece of advice on safety is you should probably take your battery out of your saw before you start attaching it to this thing. So I got to get this blade to line up because you use this line and the line is adjustable. I kind of lined it up myself against the table. You know, it's there's a lot of play in it. So who knows if I'm lined up right. I guess I just got to wait till I do a test cut. So the guide rail has a ruler on it and I'm going to set it to five inches. Then I'm gonna cut a notch into my workbench. Then I'll measure it and see how far off it is. And then just adjust the saw as much as it's off, if that makes sense. So it took about three or four attempts. You can see three of them right here, but uh, I got it on to the five, five inch dead on. You see that? So now phase two of cutting a sheet of plywood. I have to climb my fat ass up this ladder to get my saw horses down so I can set them up in a different garage because I don't have enough room in my garage because it's so dang small. I'm sorry, I just get a little mad when I'm hungry. I haven't eaten in like 30 minutes and I've never watched myself walk down a ladder before. It is kind of embarrassing. Carrying these things always reminds me of that movie Desperado where the guy has the two good guitar cases with the guns in them. What a nerd. Nerd alert. <laughs> <laughs> These saw horses are really awesome, but uh, they just take a little while to set up for just cutting one sheet of plywood. I, I, I mean, if you're going to do something long, you know, a bunch of sheets or something like that, that's fine. But just for one sheet. So I kind of want to get this new. Have you seen them Bora ex, extension tables? I'll put a picture of it right here. Is it just me or do I always want a new tool? My wife was giving me crap because I just told her that I wanted the saw horses a few years ago, and now I have a new thing that I want. If anybody has these uh, boar centipedes or have used them, let us know in the comments how they work so we can pick one up if we want. And I'll also put a link in the description. Now my daughter, she bought me these handles last Christmas. And they make it much easier to carry plywood by yourself. I'm always carrying plywood by myself because for some reason nobody wants to work with me anymore. I don't know what I do wrong, but people work with me for a little while and then they just don't want to do it anymore. It's not like I'm an unsafe worker or something. I just don't get it. Sorry, when I exert myself in the slightest little bit, it gives me gas. I guess it'll just remain a mystery. Until then, I'll just be working solo. So once you get your foam onto your worktop, uh, it's really hard to get the next piece of wood on top of there because it just wants to slide around. So here's a trick I do. I put a couple of two by fours on the ground. Then I clamp the foam to my lower plywood. And I use those two by fours to keep my sheet of plywood off the floor a little bit. That way I can get my hands underneath the plywood and it makes it easier to just to lift it up and slide it onto the table like this. Now you may not have to do this. When I was in my twenties, 
I think they made plywood a lot lighter. And now it's nap time. So finally, three hours into this build and five minutes into this video, and I'm finally doing something towards the build. Whoever's still with me at this point, thank you. I appreciate you. Okay, let's see how good this thing worked. I got five inches here and five inches here. This thing worked great. I want to do this really cool montage of me cutting each strip down, but my battery died on this second cut, so that took the wind right out of my sail. Wind is back, baby. How do you like this montage? Pretty cool. I don't know if you can notice this in the video, but I had the same problem with the other rip guide I had. When you get to the end and you're just hanging out over, I tend to, I don't know if it's a user error or if it's just the way the mechanics work on those rip guides, but I tend to curve this way. And you can see it in this last piece uh, as you get thinner. Uh, I can see it. I don't know if the, if the camera's really picking it up. Maybe if I go to the side. So that could cause a problem, but I'm not gonna stop now and cut up a new piece. I'm gonna make it work. That's how we do it here in America. There you go, I got nine out of it. They all line up pretty good. When I put them together, see how, how the ends look? They look really good. You come down this end, look how, look at that. Very uniform. Let me flip this top one around. Okay, now look, you can see they were bowed, but if I line most of it up, the middle is good still. You know, take out that bow. But when I get down the end, you see how much that swipes out? That's got to be at least a quarter of an inch. And it does the same thing on the other side. Look at that. You see that? That's at least a quarter of an inch, if not almost a half an inch. So once I went off, it just kept multiplying it over every pass. I tried my hardest to keep it on because I had that same problem with the last rip guide I have. But you can see, like, that's a lot for it to be off. And both sides are the same way. So hopefully... If I keep them all on the wall the same way, it won't cause a problem. I never use my riving knife because it's all attached to this whole big contraption. And it's kind of a pain in the butt. So I just never use it, but I'm going to be cutting a 45 and I don't want to film myself doing something dangerous on YouTube. So I'm going to put my riving knife in. At first I tried the lesser known Polish cleat wall so you don't have to cut the 45s. But I figured out real quick why it's not as popular. So I watched this really great video called The Complete Guide to French Cleats by Bittner Built Woodworking. So according to the video I watched, all I gotta do is set my blade, set my fence, I should say, two inches from the blade. And when I cut the five inch strip down the, uh, you know, at a 45, it should perfectly give me two equal pieces. You're probably thinking, well, two inches isn't half of five inches. And that's what he says in the video. Uh, it's because, you know, you're cutting it out of 45. So when you bring your blade over, you know, you're getting that angle under there. You'll see. So to get this thing to 45, there's a handle right here that you pull up. I'm sure, it's just like your table saw probably. And then I'm supposed to be able to turn this and it should be 45. -ing. I can't, I don't know if I pull it out like that. There's got to be something loose. So I put this blade guard on for nothing because when I try to adjust my blade to 45 degrees, the blade guard hits my fence. I can't even get it to 45 degrees. This is at about 30 something degrees. Some guy in my comments said I didn't know what I was talking about, which we already knew that. But then he said, this is one of the best saws he's ever owned. So he must have had like a hand crank saw before this one. Dude, I'm so sick of this saw. I'm like this close to going to buy a new one right now. Okay, so in the video I watched, he said... Put the blade at two inches from the from your fence. Then when you put it at a 45, it's gonna give you right in the middle. But his 45, I, I wouldn't think this would make a difference, but for some reason it does. His 45 went away from his fence. It went in the other direction. Mine goes towards my fence, and that's why I had to take off the blade guard because it just hits the fence. And I would swap the fence, but the other side of the fence isn't meant to be a fence. So it's not like I can go either side. This is the flat side. This has a bunch of ridges on it. So, I mean, it probably work, but it's not meant to do it. So I'm, I'm not going to do it. But so anyways, I put it at three inches instead of two. I'm going to give this a try. This seems like more like it. And it gives me a little bit more room to place my uh, welfare grabber, which actually I actually went and got the grabber pro. This is the this is the Millscraft version. It's like half the price. Well, they have a cheaper version now of the other one, I think, because this came out, they had to lower their prices. But this is like $39, I think, maybe 20 something. I have to look at it. I'll leave the, the price on here and I'll leave a link to it if you guys want to get one. Uh, but I'm going to try this one. I'm going to give this one a try too. Uh, it just worries me at this 45. I don't know if there's a 
spot where the blade's gonna fall into this, so uh, I'll have to check it out. I'll let you know. I need to get some new safety glasses. Can you see how tight these are on my head? I don't know if you can tell from the video, from the, in the video, but look at how I try to push them on. They're pushing themselves back off. Either they're like little kids safety glasses or I have the biggest head that I can't even fit man-sized human safety glasses. Anyways, somebody saw me John Mulaney's selling some shop shades that are supposed to be good. Uh, let me know if any of you guys have tried them, if they work good. I know I just said John Mulaney, but I meant John Malecki. We have more of the same size head. Other than the ugly mustard and ketchup colored design they use all, on all their stuff, this Millscraft grabber worked pretty good. I never used the micro jig Gur Ripper, but I can't see it being much better than this Millscraft version for $20 more, unless you just hate these colors. All right, well, it looks like three inches was not the magic number. That's what my wife said. And uh, when I cut this in half, there was still a little bit left over. So I have to move it away from the blade about a 16th of an inch. So let's see, I'm gonna put this up against the blade, try to use this to look at my gap. All right, let's try that. It is a hair off, so I moved it over just a tiny bit, and uh, let's try this again. Okay, so it took me four tries, but I got it dead center. Perfect. So let's just start cutting these. See that yellow power strip behind me? When I plug in my vacuum and my saw to that strip at the same time, for some reason it blows the little circuit protector inside of it. I used to plug in my vacuum over there, but the cable company needed both outlets for the cable modem. So I don't have no other place to plug this thing in. Maybe I could plug it right into the wall right there. Let's try that. The cord barely reaches to plug it in up here. I feel like the dock from Back to the Future trying to get that plugged into there. Even with this video sped up 600%, you can see how long it's taking me to get the first part of my board through the blade. I thought maybe that was like sap on my blade or something, because once I got past that part, it went through like butter. And I realized it was not uh, sap, it was an issue that I had. The beginning of this cut was burning up the blade. And then after that, it just, I don't know if I had some sap on there or what, but it was fine after that, it went smooth. Just in the beginning, for some reason, it was burning it up. Only I can turn something as simple as building a French fleet wall in a 12-part docu-series because of all the mishaps that I get into. I don't know why every simple project or what I think is simple, look at this. I can't get it on the thing. Now I got to shut off the saw halfway through my cut, go over there and fix it. Am I the only one that this stuff happens to all the time? When I watch YouTube channels, they never have this stuff happen. But everything I build, weird crap happens like this. Well, that's because you're an idiot. <laughs> okay, I figured out why I was having a hard time cutting these cleats on the table saw. Can you see the bow in this? You can kind of see it, but right where that bow is, look at the burn mark. It was that bow that was giving me the problem. Okay, now that I got all my cleats cut, I'm going to glue them and nail them onto a half-inch sheet of plywood. The thing that annoys me about buying lumber at the big box stores is all the stickers they put on everything. Stickers and staples into everything. See, why is that in there? So I can cut my finger on it when I go to move it? Okay, so this first one, I'm gonna make flush to the bottom factory edge of the board of the two by, of the plywood underneath of it. And I got my straw in case I got any squeeze out. You wanna make sure you don't get any glue squeeze out above the 45 on your cleat, because then when you go to put the opposing cleat inside of it, it won't fit right. And you won't be able to sand it because it's gonna be hard to get a sander in there, so. Just try to get it out before it dries. I'm trying to figure out the spacing between cleats and what you need is enough to where you can pull it out and then still get your piece out. So it's best to put it upside down, put it right up against your cleat and then make sure you have, you know, like give yourself at least a quarter of an inch in between. I'm at about three inches in between. Looks like it's good for me. And then I'm gonna have like a one inch block that I can uh, wedge the top with. When I was first planning this, I was thinking it'd be cool if I did like a rabbit into the bottom of the upper cleat and then put a lip on my little blocks that I make so that way they can slide in and they can't slide back out. And then I'm gonna paint the background black so that way when I put the cleats on, they pop on the wall and it looks all cool. Then when I start building it, I'm like, man, I don't feel like doing all that. This is just a cleat wall in my garage. Ain't nobody got time for all that. I got stuff to build. 
I made three three inch spacer blocks that I'm gonna use to get my spacing between my cleats. And all I'm gonna do is set them in between the cleats, push my upper cleat uh, to it, and then glue it and nail it down. Now I made my spacer blocks out of the same three quarter inch material that, I'm, that I made the cleats out of, and I think that was a mistake. I should have made them fatter, like out of two by material or just anything fatter than the three quarter inch material, because each time when I, I would wedge it against the the bottom cleat, it would go underneath of it a little bit because it was the same exact size as it. So it just leaves more chances of making a mistake. It's better to pick your spacer blocks like my wife picked her husband, a little bit on the fat side. And then just keep repeating that process of moving your blocks up, glue it, nail it, move your blocks up, glue it, nail it until you get to the top. It's as simple as that. Really nothing else I can say about that. So this is where I'm hanging my French cleat wall. I just got to clear out this whole area. And as you can see, there's not much space to put anything in here. Now I got my space cleared out. I just want to put my French cleat wall against my workbench because I got a little prep to do before I hang it on the wall. I probably should have ran these all through the table saw and took off that sharp edge. I don't think you really need that sharp edge and you have a chance of that snapping off. So I'm just gonna hit it up with some sandpaper right now. Sanding is so boring. I have to do something to make it a little bit more fun. I wish I could moonwalk. That would have been cool. You guys would have been tripping like. If I was doing, you know, what if I was doing that? Like, I'm too fat, I can't do it. This is what I call working smarter, not harder. What's that saying? Teach a fat man to fish, he'll find a way to do it easier. Look, I'm in the villain's lair from the old Batman TV series. Who remembers that? That's old school. Damn good. All right, I'm gonna try to attempt to lift this onto the bench by myself. If you guys see me fall and this thing falls on top of me, call 911, because my wife will leave me in here and not come out. No, that's not gonna work. I want to do it with both hands, but I don't. I can't I rub this against my face, so I don't know. Uh, uh, maybe if I just do one corner at a time. Woo! I lived. So before I hang this cleat wall, I'm gonna mark out all my studs so I can make sure when I do hang this thing, the screws are hitting studs. So I just used some two by fours to lift the cleat wall above my workbench because that's why I wanted just about three, four inches above my workbench. But because my workbench is sitting on the garage floor, most garage floors are sloped towards the door. My French cleat wall is out of level. So now I just need to put a few wedges up underneath of it. I'm all about Harbor Freight just like the next woodworker, but I got these drill bits from there. I put them in my self tapper. Watch how this thing works. See, that should have been in already. It should not take this long to drill an eighth inch hole into a sheet of plywood. I could have MacGyvered a better drill bit than this with some CA glue and a used Q-tip. Okay, so I got my French cleat wall up. That's where my bench is gonna sit. But now I gotta figure out what to do with my phone. That's where I had my phone, was behind my bench. I'm gonna try to squeeze it in behind my wood rack, but I got that thing of cords back there. That might have to get moved over or come down or something. I hung this back here when I first moved in and it's just not in a convenient spot now. So I'm gonna take it down. This is also where I keep my shop defense. What are these, katanas? What are these swords called? Anyway, it's a sword. I used to be a sword master. I look like Star Wars kid there. You remember Star Wars kid? So now I get to start making the tool holders that are gonna hang on this cleat wall. And I have to tell you, it's actually pretty fun to just not have to worry about specific measurements. I know I'm using a, a square and everything, but you don't really have to worry about specific measurements. You can be really free and loose and just build and be creative. It's 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 kind of neat. And like you always have something you can be working on now. So if you're trying to hide from your wife, not that I'm doing that, not that I'm doing that. How dare you accuse me? So now my biggest dilemma is trying to figure out what I want to hang on this thing because I don't want to use up all the real estate that I, the, the little bit of real estate that it has. So I made this for my longer clamps. This isn't one of them. This is just, so I don't have to hold a long clamp here, but this is, uh, I made this for my longer clamps and I was going to hang this on there. But if I hang this up here, my clamps are going to take up, what is that? It's a foot long. So an eighth, an eighth of the whole board is going to be taken up by clamps. And it's just the hanging part of the clamp. So I don't think I want to put those there. I think I'm going to put these on the wall where I was going to put the shelves. 
Okay, so I went with the back corner for those. Let me know in the comments if you think that looks good back there. Are you recording? Do you want me to leave you be while you do this? Uh, sure. Okay. I'm just doing this one and then I'm done. No rush means I got about 60 seconds. One thing I try to do when I'm building these tool holders is knock off all the sharp edges of the wood. That way it makes it look a little better and you don't have nothing you're gonna scrape yourself on. I bought this Jergens edge planer. Oh, not Jergens, not the lotion, Jergensen. I bought this Jergensen edge planer and it works really good. I bought it on Amazon with my own money. I'm not sponsored, but I will leave an affiliate link in the description if you guys wanna check it out. That's as simple as it is. You just adjust the knob and slide it on the edge. I don't know if you could tell in the video, but I'm using the chamfered edge. It gives it a bit of a 45 rather than a round over. But it has different blades stored in the handle. Like this one right here is round over. It's a quarter inch round over. You know what I just thought of? What if the son from the Jurgens Lotions family bought this tool company and that's why it's called Jurgens Son? Boom, mind blown. So I've had this wire rack hanging on my wall for a while and I've just thrown miscellaneous stuff in it. Mostly it holds my rubber gloves and some paper towels and then a roll of like craft paper to put down. Uh, but until I build individual stuff for all that, I'm gonna just throw a, a cleat on the back of it and hang it on the wall like it is. This is a really simple, easy uh, tool hanger that anybody can make. And it's very versatile because most tools come with holes in them or stuff like that. And not only can you hang tools from them, you can hang your apron or anything like that. And all you really need is some scrap wood and a dowel. I just made this one for my two foot level, but I have some other tools that could be hung like this that I'm gonna make some more for. So I think that's a pretty good start for this video. Let me show you what I did. I must be paying this guy too much. He's getting all swagged out. Look at him. I got these plastic containers on clearance at Walmart and they work pretty good for holding little things like that. So I just made a holder for those. So I could just stick it in there. If I want to take that off, I can take it. This is when I had all my CA glue in, but one of the bottles leaked and all the bottles stuck together. And when I pulled them apart, it ripped open other bottles. All the little tips are glued together and ruined my whole thing. So I'm, I'm doing a one man boycott on Star Bond until they re reimburse me. I don't think I like this one with the saw blades in it. It looks kind of jankety. I'm gonna upgrade it, but it's good enough for now. It got all my saws out of these buckets over here, so good enough for now. So that's what I got done for now. If you guys got any suggestions of any ones you've seen, leave them in the comments. Uh, there's some ones I wanna redo. Like I said, I don't like that saw blade one. And then look at this one. You don't wanna have those two on the same shelf and ever mix them up. Trust me, you don't wanna mix those two up.